Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Okay, let's go over the whole encapsulation process step by step. Here we have computer A, and let's say computer A is trying to make an HTTP request to computer B. We can see computer A's IP address is 192.168.6.100. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. We haven't gotten into subnet masks yet, but basically what this says is that any IP address between 192.168.6.1 and 192.168.6.254 is in this computer's subnet. The default gateway is 192.168.6.1. Basically, we use the default gateway if we're trying to contact a computer that's not in our subnet. And the MAC address is 00 11111111. And that's not a real MAC address. I'm just making this one 11111, this one 222222233333, just so it's easier to read. Although this is the correct MAC address format. So now computer A is trying to make an HTTP request to computer B, whose IP address is 192.168.8.200. So computer B is in a different subnet than computer A, and we can also see that computer A is behind a router so it's in a different broadcast domain than computer B. So the first thing computer A is going to need to do is figure out computer B's IP address and it's going to query a DNS server to do that. So it's going to say hey DNS server what's computer B's IP address? The DNS server is going to come back with 192.168.8.200 so now computer A knows that, okay, computer B is not in my subnet. If computer B was in my subnet, I would send out an ARP request to get the MAC address for computer B's IP address. But since it's not in my subnet, I know that I need to send this frame that we're going to create over to our default gateway, which is 192.168.6.1 but I need to get the MAC address of 192.168.6.1. To do that, computer A is first going to look in its ARP cache. And let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, I'm on computer A, and I'm just going to open up a command prompt. And I'm going to type in ARP minus A. And this is actually going to show this computer's ARP cache. And we can see that 192.168.6.1 is in fact cached. So in this case, desktop A would not send out an ARP request to figure out 192.168.6.1's MAC address because it already knows it. And this is a real example of a MAC address. In our diagram, we're just going to use a fake MAC address just so it's easier to look at. In, ex in our example, we're going to act like it, the MAC address is not in the ARP cache of desktop A. So let's go back to our diagram. So computer A looks in its ARP cache, and again, in this example, doesn't have the MAC address for the default gateway, which is 192.168.6.1. So it needs to actually send out an ARP request saying, hey, what's the MAC address for 192.168.6.1? It's going to send that out. Remember, an ARP request is a broadcast, so it's going to go to all hosts on our subnet here in our broadcast domain. And... Our router, this interface on our router, FA00, this is just fast Ethernet uh, 00 port. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But it's this port on the router is going to see, hey, I'm 192.168.6.1, and I know my MAC address. It's 00.222.222. So it's going to send that back to computer A. So now computer A knows the default gateway's MAC address, so it can start to create the packet and the frame to make its HTTP request over to computer B. So this is going to be step one here. Computer A sends a PDU, and PDU is protocol data unit. So we're going to go down the OSI model here. So layer seven, six, and five. We're on computer A. We open up Internet Explorer, and we type in HTTP colon slash slash computer B. 
Now we've already gone through the DNS process and the ARP process. So we're going to make our way down to layer 4. And layer 4 is where the encapsulation process is going to begin. So remember this is a segment and we're going to tack on a header here for a source port and a destination port. Well, we're making an HTTP request, so the destination port is going to be port 80. And we're going to be using the TCP protocol. We'll get into that a little bit more, but that's going to be a generated number that's over 1024, or 1024 and above. So in this example, I'll just make it pick 20,000. So the segment's ready. It's going to be passed down to layer 3 to become a packet. And here, it's going to add the control header. We're going to need a source IP, a destination IP, and a protocol. Let's go back and look at our diagram. Well, we know the source IP is our IP, which is 192.168.6.100, and we figured out the destination IP address through DNS. It's 192.168.8.200. So let's go ahead and add those. Add our destination IP address. Okay, we've added our source IP and destination IP. The next field is protocol, and this lets IP know what protocol has been encapsulated. And that's actually going to be the TCP protocol because we're making an HTTP request. But again, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But the protocol numbers are actually standardized, and this is actually the hex value, and we're going to talk about hexadecimal uh, in a little while too, so that, that's not important right now for the encapsulation process. But now we have our packet. So next it's going to be passed down to layer 3, our layer 2, and we're going to create a frame out of that packet. 